Hey y'all, it's Betty. I think my camera's a little crooked. <laughs> if I told you guys that I had all of the energy that I wanted to have for this video, I would be lying because I'm feeling kind of tired. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, then you wouldn't know. I decided that I'm posting every Tuesday and Thursday um, on this channel. So I'm filming another video later on today. Hopefully there will be daylight left <laughs> for me to film after this one. The second one I'm filming is going to be my True Crime Tuesday. I ended up changing it to True Crime Tuesday because I literally cringed at my last video when I said Murder Monday and I was like, you know, it sounds a little aggressive. On today's video, we're going to be getting a little bit deep. We're going to be talking about body hair, the history of body hair, and how it came to be a social norm to have to remove your body hair. I was doing some research before I started this video in regards to body hair and when the removal of body hair started and I found that uh, Gillette created a razor specifically targeted towards women in the year 1914. So prior to that, of course, women were still removing body hair but they were doing it in other ways other than razors because men at that time were, all, were the only ones that were using razors and a lot of women actually felt really embarrassed to be seen trying to purchase a razor um so it was actually kind of frowned upon back in that day because women were still meant to look soft and delicate but there was only certain ways that you can do that without a razor and um that would be waxing waxing goes way back to the egyptian days when women were completely hairless well, everyone was completely hairless, but they would wax and um, I even saw like I had never heard about it But they would like use stones and sandpaper to kind of like rub off basically the hair from like uh, their face from anywhere from their face down to their neck because Back in like the Victorian days if you look at these like little pictures here they were like covered for mo for most of their body so they didn't have to worry about anyone seeing any of their body hair they just had to worry about their faces and that's exactly what they would do they would go ahead and make sure that they would wax their faces and or do other things like use stones or epileptors and things like that um so when the razor was introduced women started wearing a lot less clothes um back in the early 1900s um, is when like the pinup started being introduced and um, it started becoming really um, like a common social norm for women to be hairless basically in their entire body um, and I find all of that so interesting because I have a lot of history when it comes to body hair and removing body hair I have tried a lot of things uh, ever since I was a wee little tot, I got introduced to removing body hair probably, well, it might have actually been late, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> I, I may have been a little late to the game, um, but I feel like I was still too young to be worried about stupid things like that. I was born in 1993 to two Mexican parents, um, my dad being very Mexican looking, my mom, I'll probably throw like some pictures of them up here. My mom low-key looks Asian, but she's definitely not. She's full-blooded Mexican. I would be interested in her doing a 23andMe just to kind of see like what her ancestors were kind of like um, and like where she originates from, like her DNA and all of that. Uh, but yeah, and I, I just remember growing up and not thinking anything about myself, like not thinking that I was like different in any sort of way. My mom kind of like raised us in this bubble, uh, my siblings would probably attest to it, where we just assumed that kindness was everywhere, like everyone was just nice to each other and for a while there, you obviously grow up and like kinder through, in my case it was fifth grade, like I never got bothered in regards to anything, like I never really got bullied, maybe a little bit in fifth grade actually, like on the bus and stuff, I would get bullied occasionally, but sixth grade is literally when it got the absolute worst and I would get bullied due to me having hairy arms and um, growing up a Latina, um, I know that there was multiple girls with hairy arms, but mine were specifically 
pretty dark, like my arm hair was dark and it was long and it looked just like my dad's. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was, it was really hard trying to like understand why that was such a bad thing because I literally, prior to people pointing it out and making it seem like this awful thing, I never, I never thought about it as like a bad or ugly or disgusting thing. As far as my arms go, I have not seen my full grown arm hair since I was like 13 or 14. I started shaving, I'm pretty sure when I turned 13, but it wasn't like on an everyday basis, like I didn't keep up with it as much. But when I turned 14, I do remember shaving every single day and I've been shaving my arms every single day since I was 14. My fiance has been with me for eight years and he has never seen my arm hair. I've had this conversation with him so many times because I talked to him about my childhood. This is not a sad, sappy video, girl. So I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, girl, like I said, growing up, my, my mom didn't really talk to us about anything in regards to that. It was never like a part of like a hygienic thing like that you had to like start shaving at some point in your life. I was just going on through my life as a regular little 12 year old, not worried about anything. And then I got to sixth grade, like in fifth grade, I would hear about it a little bit like, why is your arm hair so long? But I was just like, whatever. Like, didn't really pay attention to it until I got to sixth grade. Sixth grade, I had a specific, well, two specific bullies that would not let it go. Like, bitch, if I look like this, I look like this. Like, why are you so worried about it? You know, but they were. And um, I just like was never good at comebacks. I, I don't think I was ever confident enough to just be like, this is me, like take it or leave it. I would tell my sister about it and she'd be like, you just tell them that it doesn't matter what you look like, you're gonna be super successful and they're gonna be like looking back at their life, like looking at how lame it was for them to make fun of you and stuff. So I would say like dumb cheesy stuff like that all the time, right? But I feel like that gave them even more ammo to just like tear me apart. And it, it really did. It like, I, I would go home and um, it was it was a while before I brought it up to my mom. And my mom like, she has like the lightest arm hair of life, but she was very much into removing her, any body hair that she had. And I, I wasn't aware of that until I brought it up to her. So it took me a while for me to even tell her that this was going on in school. And she like asked me if I wanted her to talk to a teacher and of course I said no because I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. And she was like, well, I use these creams. Like I don't shave my arms because they say like it'll grow back thicker. So I just like use these creams all the time and it's like basically hair removal cream. Um, smelled like cucumber. It's like such a specific smell. If I were to smell it now, like I wouldn't know exactly what it was. Um, but yes, that was like the very first thing that I tried. And um, she went ahead and she removed like all my little arm hair. Like just thinking about it now, it's just like, it's so sad. Like how you let society determine the person that you are. Like it never bothered me, it just didn't. And as soon as I started getting bullied is when it started to like get to me. So um, it was one of those things that's like, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. So I went into school feeling so confident, like my arms feel baby booty smooth. What are y'all gonna say now? And I walk into the class and they're like, did you shave your arms? Oh my God, you're so lame. And just like tore me to pieces again. And like, I just couldn't, I couldn't win. So eventually <laughs> time went on and um, I just didn't see them anymore. And I made a whole new group of friends and my life was so different without these two kids that would just like torture me. And ever since then though, like I just never let my arm hair grow back. Even though my mom told me that shaving your arms wasn't good for you or that your hair would grow back so thick and blah, blah, blah. I like shaved my arms every single day. So um, when I made that new group of friends, I don't think anyone just knew any different. And that's how I've lived my life like ever since then. And I feel like so many things have just been like brought up in my life. And I'm just like, maybe that's one thing that I just need to revisit and just close that chapter of my life and just be like, 
I'm just gonna let my arm hair grow out just to see what it's like. Is it really as bad as it was when I was a child? I like think about it so differently now. Like it doesn't really make me sad anymore. It, it did make me sad for a very long time. Like I always felt like I wanted to look like what I would feel like people want me to look like. And um, these past few years have been like so transformative for me. And I'm really, I don't know, I feel like I'm a different person. So I want to like revisit my body in that way. I, I don't know, it's just like the strangest thing. I don't know why I feel like I have to do this, but I do just to like move on with my life and like never look back at that time again, just so that I know that I can accept myself for exactly what I look like. And I've thought about this before and I've thought about doing it before, um, but I've never actually like bit the bullet and done it. And like, I'm not about to be a hypocrite because like, if it all grows in and I'm like, okay, it's just not cute. Like, I'm um, obviously, I will continue to shave. I don't know how I'm going to feel. I don't know how it's gonna make me feel. Um, it's been like four days. <laughs> Gotta show you guys. <laughs> it's been like four days since I shaved my arms. I don't think I would do the whole armpit thing. I know that that's like a thing. And like, <clears throat> Dude, I should not have ate. And like more power to you, like if um, you feel you're just like, fuck that, like I don't wanna shave my armpits, like dude, more power to you, sis. But I just feel like I would be sweating my ass off and I just, I don't know, <laughs> me personally, I just know that I would be like so self-conscious about it. And I don't even know how I'm gonna feel about this, but we gonna find out. Um, so this is what I got going on. Hopefully it focuses. For not shaving for four days, I've never ever, <laughs> like, I can't really tell if it's focused or not, so I'm sorry if I'm being dumb. Um, but I, it's been so long since I have not, not shaved. I'm very eager to see what it's going to look like and what it's gonna, grow out to be just because I really can't I can't remember myself like looking down and being like I have arm hair because a sister has been shaving since she was 13 like um but yeah I guess this video is just to kind of motivate anyone out there that's kind of like self-conscious about something or that you were like bullied about when you were younger and that made you feel like you needed to change in some sort of way. I'm sorry, Summer's here. <laughs> that made you feel like you needed to change in some sort of way. Like, I feel like it's very important and I feel like it's gonna be so therapeutic to kind of like revisit that and just be like, it wasn't that bad. We should all be just confident in our own skin and that is my goal. Like, I just wanna be confident in who I am. And like I said, if it, if it ends up being like, my legs like i would rather not see my legs hairy i will continue shaving my arms but i want to know that i'm doing it for me so that's all this was it was a whole little tea on <laughs> um my past and how it was growing up a hairy latina it was rough i dealt with a lot i'm pretty sure i was depressed when i was in sixth grade I was never diagnosed my mom said that the doctor just told her that I was growing and that's why I was sleeping so much. I'm pretty positive I was depressed. But either way, I I've been I've been through it and I made it through the other side. So if you or anyone you know is going through anything like that where they're feeling self-conscious because of bullies or because of what they see online, just know that you're gonna get through it, number one. Number two, you really wanna sit there and analyze if you're doing something because you actually wanna do it and because you want to see yourself in that light or because you're being influenced. Because for me, I know back then I was doing it because I was being influenced by the people around me and what society found to be attractive or um, what was, a social norm for women that had to be soft and hairless um, but today I don't know I don't know why I keep doing it it feels like it's out of habit so 
I want to stop and see how I feel. And if I don't mind it, then I'll just let it be. <laughs> It'll be one less thing to do in the shower anyway. Um, but if I would rather see myself the way I've been seeing myself for the past 12 years, then I'll just go back to shaving and that's okay. Um, and I hope that, like I said, it, it really motivate, mo motivates someone um, <clears throat> to look at yourself and make sure that you're doing things because that it's, it's what makes you happy. As corny as it sounds, honestly, like make sure that it's what makes you happy. Make sure you're doing it for you and just know that no person can replicate you. You are exactly who you were meant to be, you look exactly the way that you were meant to look like. And in this day and age where everyone is getting plastic surgeries and wanting to look like a Kardashian, you do you, boo. You make sure that you are happy with who you are inside and out because no matter how beautiful you or money makes you look, if you're not good with yourself on the inside or you were never good with yourself, None of that is going to help you. None of that is going to make you happy. Like you need to be good before you start making big changes in your life. And I hope that hits home for some of y'all because people really be out here faking their whole life and it's sad. Um, but that's just the day and age we live in and I kind of do feel like we're moving toward people being more individualistic. Is that a word? Did I just make that up? Um, being more individuals and coming more into their skin. So if I can do something to hop on that bandwagon where I'm just like, be happy with who you are, I'm gonna be up on here as cheesy as it sounds. <laughs> just letting y'all know how I feel and what I'm working with. And I'm gonna check back with y'all too, maybe on Instagram or on this channel when it when all my arm hair grows out i might just like make a second video to let you guys know what it looks like and how i feel um i feel like it's gonna be interesting and i'm really just ready to be happy with myself in every aspect possible like not have any question in that I am making myself look the way I look or that I look the way that I look because that's what I want. Have full control. Always remember, have full control. You got this, girl. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.